Good morning. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 1 to 3. Then David fled from Naoth in Ramah and went and said to Jonathan, What have I done? What is my iniquity? And what is my sin before your father that he seeks my life? So Jonathan said to him, By no means, you shall not die. Indeed, my father will do nothing, either great or small, without first telling me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. Then David took an oath again and said, Your father certainly knows that I have found favor in your eyes. And he has said, Do not let Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. So here's the setting. For the last several chapters, although David's done only good, Saul has been pursuing David. He's been trying to kill him for chapters and chapters. And so now David's sort of experiencing some of that despair. And when you read some of the Psalms, because many of the Psalms were written by David, we do see him both in joy and in despair and in every kind of emotion in between. Next time you're feeling pretty wiped out, pretty hopeless. Go back there and read the Psalms. I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than to sit down with a, a tall glass of, of clear water, quiet space, and your Bible, and open it to the book of Psalms. Take a deep breath, and you'll find all the peace you need there as you, as you commune with God and His Spirit and His Word. That will give you peace that no pill will ever give you, and no self-help book will ever get you, but God will give it to you. But David here is distressed. He feels hopeless. Everything he's done has led only to this spot where the king is still against him. And there's like no reason. And there's no reasoning with this guy. What do you do? And so David sounds here like he's, he's getting a little bit a little bit down. It looks hopeless to him. Where's my future? I mean, the years, the weeks, the months, the years, the days, they're all going by. And, and what do you do? What do you do when you're being relentlessly pursued? Thankfully, David has his friend Jonathan to confide in, and so Jonathan's going to look to try to encourage David. But, pretty rough place to be, and you can understand David behaving very humanly here, very humanly, and yet, would you or I do any better? But in the Spirit of God, we could do better and should do better, but it's completely understandable how David feels desperate and perhaps running out of hope. His hope is waning. If... David is descending from seeing things in the big picture, in the divine picture. He's descending back into that small human space where he can only see things humanly. God needs to help us come out of that space. We can't, we can't do much in that space. We need to see bigger. May God help us to see bigger. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you that you can help us to see with, with your eyes, with your eyeballs. Bless us, help us when we're depressed, when we're discouraged, when we begin to feel hopeless. Lord, deliver us and help us to have friends, friends we can trust in other spiritual seekers, people who are seeking Jesus, just as Jonathan was a true follower of you. May we seek out those people and you can encourage us sometimes through their agency as well. Help us to know, notice who those people are and people who are walking with Jesus. And may we not lose our way. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. God wants to encourage us. I'm sure of it. So let's let him do that encouraging. Don't lock yourself into a space and go alone. God has a servant to encourage you. The end is not yet. God is on his throne. And he wants you to be there at his side in his will. God be with you.